Croy to a channel of light fluid. Well, I told you we'd have some solstice tennis ace, and here we are. Rather cloudy and slightly rainy day for me, anyway. Finally, we start to get darker nights coming in. And trust me, where I live, we need them back. Sun's set in around 25 to midnight at the moment. Anyway, enough of the weather reports. Let's get back to the story. I come back again. One of the students in Class 1A waves at me as I leave their attraction, a big goofy smile on his face. I have to admit, there are quite a few interesting displays set up this year. Class 1A set up a dramatised retelling of the legend of the old gods Izanagi and Izanami. The story itself is a pretty well-known myth, but the acting and the lighting effects were very good. I was drawn to it the whole time. It certainly beats the weird version of Romeo and Juliet that I watched yesterday, that's for sure. Still, I look down at my phone, part of me is pleading for the day to end already. Even though I've been trying to distract myself, I've had something gnawing on me since the weekend. Shuichi and I barely spoke at all since then. He hasn't had any free time since Monday, which means I've been worrying about him without having any chance to check up on him. And, well, I also kind of miss him. I keep thinking about him wherever I'm alone and idle. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. Now I keep worrying about him all the time, thinking about how his day went and wondering if he's doing well despite his barely talking. Is this what falling for someone is like? It's never happened to me before, so I don't know. Besides, I'm just being silly. It's not like we don't talk at all. We still message each other every day in the morning and right before bed, just like we used to before. Good morning. Oh, your day today is great. I'm going to be a bit busy, so I probably won't be able to hang out with you. Please have fun without me. That was a text he sent me yesterday. Yep, not much has changed, except for maybe... Good night, Carriad. Have sweet dreams. I love you. My cheeks feel a bit hot just reading this stuff again. Sweet you, dork. Why do you have to be so sweet and dreamy all the time? It scares me just how quickly I'm getting attached to in a whole different way than I was before. The more time I have to adjust to these new feelings, the more strongly they come up. If anything, now that I know they're there and what they are, it feels like they're resonating even stronger inside of me. God, I sound so stupid and mushy even to myself. I really need a distraction right now. Hmm? A figure at the corner of my eye catches my attention. I turn around to look and... Well, rookie coon I see the wolf's ears twitch when I call his name and he turns around to face me. Why did I even call him? His name just came out of my lips for I noticed it. Ah, oh, it's you. What's with that look on your face? You lost or something? What, is there something on my face? He hasn't noticed it, or maybe I'm just mistaken. I think this is the first time he ever managed to greet me without insulting me. Ah, uh, it's nothing. Sorry, I'm a bit out of it. The change is so slight they barely even notice it, but Haruki's body immediately shifts when I say so. His shoulders quiver and slump a little bit. His eyebrows lie just a bit flatter and his tail lowers itself, almost going under his legs. Is everything okay? Is he... Concern for me? Yeah, I'm fine. I just have a lot on my mind. How are you doing? The wolf shrugs, looking out the windows of the hallway and staring out to the masses in the courtyard down below. I'm alright, I guess. The entire volleyball team was pretty down for the match this weekend. Only the third year's all retiring. The mood's gotten a bit weird. Just now we can't use our courts either. Yeah. His eyes focus on me again. Once he sees the expression on my face, he mutters a curse word to himself. Oh, I'm sorry, shouldn't have brought that up. Is everything okay with the dog? It beats me. Beats you, aren't you? Is but Before he can finish the sentence, I wrap my hands around his muzzle, forcing them shut. I can hear a stifled yelp and the wolf jumps away from me. Oh, oh, what's the big idea? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. You just closed my teeth on my tongue. Yeah, sorry, it's just uh, we're in public. The wolf freezes. After a few seconds frozen still, he turns around mechanically to see quite a few people stopped in the hallway, their eyes stuck on him. Ah, sorry. He mentions a quick apology to the crowd that stares at us, then turns away from them again. 
Here, aren't you well behaved today? Oh, shut up, dork. Oh, ouch. Careful, you might end up cutting some with all these sharp wits. You have to where I was asking. Is anything all right with the dog? I haven't seen him since Sunday. Usually he doesn't leave me alone for this long. Well, I didn't know you guys used to hang out. We didn't. I mean, he's always hounding me to go to practice and be nicer to our teammates and blah, blah, blah. I was here trying to dodge my question. Oh, you noticed, huh? I might not be the brightest guy out there, but I'm not stupid either. Be honest, I'm not too sure. Shuichi and I hang out with the others for a bit on Monday, but it was just a little while. We haven't really talked at all outside of that. Oh, you think he's trying to avoid you because he doesn't want to worry you? I do now. Oh, sorry. He lifts a hand in the air as he apologises, though his face remains completely neutral and unfazed. I think I liked it better you were insulting me instead of trying to be helpful. Huh? What do you mean? Never mind. Yep, totally in a way. What about you? Are you okay considering the loss on Sunday? Haruki shrugs, looking none the worse aware, all things considering. That hasn't hurt me as bad since I've barely even been a part of this team. Besides, this is my last year, I never really played with the seniors, so them leaving doesn't affect me much. I guess that's true. But it's still a bit frustrating I've lost after I finally got to play. He clenches his fist, Haruki's lips pressed together so tightly they become a single thin line. I see. I'm glad. You're glad I'm feeling frustrated? You're kind of an ass, aren't you? I don't mean you like that, just I'm glad even you can feel frustrated about losing. Wolf puts a hand on the windowsill, looking out to the courtyard once again. Oh, I guess. Hey, I've nothing better to do right now. Do you want to come with me someplace quieter so we can just talk? I kind of want some company. Sure. You don't have to look at me like that. I'm not plotting anything. The White Wolf takes a look around the empty room, whistling once he looks over all massive inside instruments. I'm surprised they don't empty out this room for the festival. There's a lot of old expensive stuff here. They don't want to risk moving them. Or at least that's what June said. Do you only see that scrawny little tiger that's with you guys on Saturday? I think that was his name anyway. Yeah, that's him. Oh, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't like being called Squirrely. Well, was there anything you wanted? Not really. I just thought we could talk for a bit. Really? We barely know each other. All of a sudden you want to talk? What, did you run to a friend who decided to go for the next best thing to keep you company? You talk too much. Well, it's not exactly why you wanted me to come here. Fair. He cocks his head to the side, looking me up and down once again. Is everything all right? You're acting strange. So are you. Since when are you so nice? I've been trying to stay distracted, but I'm a little worried about Chuichi. You said you hung out with him on Monday, didn't you? Did he look like there was something wrong? No. He didn't look upset or worried or anything? No, he seemed totally fine and energetic. So what's the problem? Can't you see? He looked totally fine. That's the problem. Don't look at me like that. I'm not crazy. It's really not helping your case any. It's just, I can't shake this feeling that he's hiding something. I mean, God, he's always been the type to stay silent when he's hurting, so he doesn't want to bother others. Well, that sounds like a royal pain in the ass. Must be all too familiar to you by now, too. Was that... Was that a gay joke? Yes, I'm technically proud of that one. Why did I want to talk to you again? Well, it's me. I was asking myself the same thing. I, I just want to get my mind off of it. I want to be able to enjoy myself instead of just worrying about how he's feeling. You shouldn't worry so much. I'm sure he's fine. He probably didn't say anything because there's nothing to say. But you can't know that. Well, if there was, if there was, he probably would have told you about it by now. Right, he told you. It's the type to keep things in. You know what? You're right. He's probably destroyed right now. Actually, if you strain your ears a little bit, you can hear the sound of him sobbing uncontrollably over his broken heart. Why are you making it worse? He refused to let me make it better. Point taken. Haruki pulls out a chair and takes a seat. Signs he looks up at me. Listen, I don't know why you thought I'd be a good company when you're like this. I'm not good at dealing with emotional people. I can insult you a few times if you want. That I'm good at. It's fine. I think I just need to have a normal conversation without worrying that others are worried about me. And I guess you come to the right person. I don't give two shits about you. 
I know what I just said was basically asking for it, but you still could have said that in a nicer way. He shrugs. Could have, should have, didn't. You're such an ass sometimes. Well, you would know about asses, wouldn't you? Was that another gay joke? Yes, I've got a bunch written down. Want to see? No, I don't want to see you, weirdo. Oh, funny, there's a smile. So that's your strategy? Antagonize me until I laugh? Nah, antagonizing was just supposed to be fun for me. You laughing is an unfortunate side effect. Sure. By the way, did your little brother come over to see the festival? Taro, not really. He's really busy studying. He's not exactly doing well at school. Why the sudden shift to my brother, though? I just remembered you two seemed to be really close when I met him, so I was curious. Nah, he's an antagonistic little shit. He'll be the death of me one of these days. Your brother is much cuter. You just say that because he's polite to strangers. He's a nightmare for me to deal with also. And that's so. Huh. Well, never thought of it. You know, I was pretty surprised to see your softer side. It was nice. Haruki crosses his arms, leaning back on his chair and shooting me an unfriendly glare with furrowed eyebrows and bared fangs. Soft? I'm not soft. That's for mushy people. Mushy people? Yeah, the kind of all, whoa, my feelings and whatnot. Blah. Makes me sick just thinking about it. You have issues, dude. Don't we all? No, that's a little too negative for my liking. The wolf shrugs. He seems to like shrugging quite a lot. Already lost count how many times he did it today. What about your brother? Did he come over to check on the festival? Nah, he's not very interested in school festivals, and he'd rather spend his time studying and practicing. Practicing? Does he also play tennis like you? Yeah, he's pretty good too. What's his rank? They even have ranks for children leagues. Right now he's ranked 45th in the country in the under-14 league. Oh, that's not very high. He still has a way to go, but he's very spirited. Must be pretty hard for him to compete like that. What do you mean? My brother is famous in all of Japan for playing the same sport, considered one of the most talented players to ever come out of the country, and he's barely in the top 50. He probably gets compared to you a lot. Oh, I never thought of that. Haruki raises an eyebrow, putting a hand on his waist and looking at me funny. With all due offence, you're an idiot. All due offence? Yeah, I meant that I knew what I was saying could be read as being offensive, and that's what I wanted to do. You're a jerk. Well, thank you. Seriously, why did I ever decide to talk to you? Well, I don't know. It wasn't because you wanted to come on to me. Yeah, no. You're quite a catch, I'm sure, but I already have a boyfriend. Oh, are you sure? I was looking forward to rejecting you. It would have been fun. I can't tell whether you're joking or not, and that worries me a little bit. Jeez, relax. I'm mostly joking. Mostly? This dude really scares me sometimes. Speaking of homo, I'll go with you and the big gay dog. You looked awfully chummy on Saturday. Speaking of homo, big gay dog, where the hell are you getting these phrases? Hey, it's really dull around here. I have to amuse myself in any way I can. I feel like the nicer it becomes to me, the less offensive his insults become. They turn more and more ridiculous instead. Well, regardless, it's hardly any of your business how things are going between the two of us. It's bad enough if you know we're dating. Oh, come on. I'm part of the reason you two even hooked up in the first place. At least satisfy my curiosity. Why are you even curious about that, of all things? Haruki shrugs. I have very few friends. Not much to talk about. Come on, spill. There's not much to tell. We just kissed a few times. Maybe hugged for a bit. That's it? Wow, you guys are boring. I thought you two would have fucked by now. I object to this entire conversation. Oh, please. You already have a reputation as a playboy here. I know you've dated a ton before. You expect me to believe you're some kind of bashful virgin? Give me a break. That is hardly... Hardly any of my business. Yeah, I got it. No need to parrot it back to me. Oh, I'm just saying, if I've been dating some broke, we can already have sealed the deal. You're so crude. Besides, it's not like, not like I'm bashful about sex or whatnot. It's just that... That. He cocks his head to the side, a big grin on his face. Seriously, why are we even talking about this? Because watching you squirm is fun. I already said this much. Might as well say the whole thing. No, I refuse. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. No way. What a bore. Better a bore than a bore. Oh, ouch, my poor feelings. How will I ever recover from these painful words? 
Just shut up already. Eh, sure thing, boss. Uh, don't call me that. I think I just felt a chill run up my spine. Alright, whatever you say, Hank. Why do I bother? Beats me. If it makes you feel any better, very few people have gotten this far before. Oh yeah? Or they get to show for putting up with you for so often. They have me to insult them on a daily basis. Wow, some treasure. I seem to enjoy it at least. Part of me is afraid of discovering who these people are, but then again I do tease and mess with my friends all the time. Guess I'm not one to talk. So what are you going to do now? Sure you don't plan on staying locked up in a room alone with me. And to be honest, even I wouldn't want to. Gee, thanks. Your presence is lovely too. Heh. I don't know, I want to hang out with Shuichi. He's probably really busy today. He didn't say anything about us meeting his messages to me this morning, so I'm assuming that's the case unless told otherwise. Why can't you just be up front and say, hey, I want to spend time together? I want to be clingy. You might get tired of me if I did that. I don't know if I want to risk it. Oh dear God, why does everything have to be so difficult with you? Are you this decisive with everything? Pretty much. If I'm in the dog shoes, I get tired of this indecisive enough instead. Just go talk to him for fuck's sake. What well, if he's really busy until he decides to take time off to be with me? Then I'd just be burdening him. He's your boyfriend, that's what he's there for. Just don't abuse it and you'll be fine. But... For crying out loud, just go right before I smack the ever loving shit out of you. Ah, got it. Great, go hunt your boyfriend around campus. It's his job to keep you entertained, not mine. So I already have plans and I can't spend too much time here. You have plans? Then I just tell you I have friends too. You don't have to sound quite so surprised. I'm not surprised. Sure you're not. Anyway, I'm going to leave now. Good luck with your relationship problems, loser. Might as well. I've been standing in front of this door for the past two minutes without having the courage to knock. I can't hear any voices on the inside, so I assume that if Shuichi's here, at least he's alone. Or maybe the room just has better sound insulation than I thought. Why am I getting so nervous over small things? Just knock on the damn door and be done with it. Alright, here I go. I timidly knock on the door. For some reason, my heart is racing a little bit. God, I really hope I don't end up becoming a bother. That's the last thing I want right now. I can't hear any sounds on either side for a few seconds. Maybe the room is empty after all. Just when I'm about to give up, I hear the sound of the door unlocking from the inside. Oh. Shuichi opens the door, his eyes going wide when he sees me. Oh, Gariad, what are you doing here? Oh, um, hi. To be honest, I'm not quite sure myself. <laughs> is everything okay? Yeah, everything's pretty okay. I guess I just, I don't know, I missed you. I see. Well, I'm flattered to hear that. Sorry to bother you. I know you're busy, but I was kind of hoping we could get some time to hang out together. Oh, well. Oh, Hector-san, I thought it was your voice I heard. Oh, he took a chance. Hi, what brings you here? I could ask you the same question. You're on the student council, are you? I'll explain it. If I leave it up to you, you're probably going to tell a really inaccurate version that paint you as some kind of saviour or something of the sorts. He took a pout, crossing her arms and huffing. A few of our senior members left the council to focus on studying for their entrance exams, so we're short-staffed. We were taking volunteer help during the festival. Yeah, so I volunteered to help him. Aren't I thoughtful? You just want an excuse to spend time chatting. You've barely done any work yet. Why didn't you tell me? I'd have offered to help. We're well, not constrained enough that I'd directly ask a friend of mine for help. Part of the reason I can work so hard on this is because I want you guys to have fun. Besides, while we're certainly a bit short-staffed, things aren't that bad. He says a little, but in really he's the only senior left in the council. Over a third of the members left in the past two weeks alone because they couldn't handle studying and the workload of the festival. Utica, don't tell him that. You dumbass. What can I do to help? Oh, Carrier, no. I don't want to burden you with this kind of thing. And I don't want you working yourself to death. And don't even argue with me on that, because we both know you'd be capable of that. Besides, this might be the only way I get to spend time with you during the festival. It's... it's not... Utica wraps her arms around Shuichi's arm, smiling. So we can spend the last day together, right? Sorry, Hector Kuhn, but this is my only chance to spend a festival with Shuichi before he graduates. You understand, right? Oh, don't just decide that kind of thing on your own. I was already thinking of making plans. 
What? But we haven't hung out together at all in months. You know, you promised me doing Dad's birthday party. Now you're going to ditch me doing the festival too? Shuichi looks between the two of us nervously. Aye, aye. It's fine. Hitika's right. It's your only chance to spend a festival with your brother as students at the same high school. You'd already had the past two years together. This is fine. But... All right, we should get back to work. We need to get all this crap done so we can actually have tomorrow free. Bless her heart, she's totally clueless about us. Man, I can't even imagine how she'd take the news if she found out. Carry it out. Why did you say that? I was planning to spend the last day of the festival with you. It's fine. It's because your sister. She shouldn't have to be fighting with me for your attention. Yeah, she is, but... Well, you're also my... my boyfriend. Shuichi whispers the last part of his sentence so his sister can't hear us inside. It's not like it's the end of the world. She doesn't know, so she has no idea she's imposing. Yeah. Is there no way we could get off for today so we could spend at least some time together? Well, I don't think so. We need to have at least one official student council member in here to mediate any disputes between students. We're also working on a bunch of forms right now. What type of forms? No complaints, suggestions, that kind of stuff. We get swarmed with them at the end of every day, and it usually takes me a full day to get through them on my own. Itako showed up saying she's going to help, so I could go out and enjoy myself too. But in the time it took me to go through twelve, she is then two. Ouch, that's pretty slow. Or maybe you're just too fast? And uh, she's just slow. I can hear you. Her voice echoes from inside the room. But apparently a very good listener. Yep. If I have, is there any chance you'll get done earlier? Hmm, it depends. Well, on my own, it'll still take me about six hours to finish, which means I'd finish at 7pm when the festival ends for the day. With Hitika helping, maybe I could shave an hour off of that. It'd honestly depend on how fast you're about to go through these forms. All right, my goal is to shave at least three hours off of that time frame then. What? That would mean you have to be going at the exact same pace as I am. Yeah, I could be pretty efficient if I set my mind to it, as long as you promise to spend time with me if I manage to do it. Uh, yeah, of course. So if I can spend time with you, then I'll do it. Great, let's get to it. As soon as I walk into the room, I see multiple piles of papers stacked loosely on top of the table. Oh, you weren't kidding when you said there were a lot of these. Yeah, it wouldn't be too much of a problem if we had a few people working on as intended. But as things are, it's kind of troublesome. What about the volunteers? Couldn't they do the work? We have no idea how the council works. The only reason Hitika can do these forms is big Sam here to tell her what to do whenever she has questions. Hey, I've barely asked any questions. Yes, and frankly that scares me a little bit because I'm afraid of all the errors I'm probably going to find once I go over the forms you've worked on. Hey. All right, what do you need me to do? The forms are pretty simple. Students fill in their information, the nature of the complaint or dispute, and we have to write down what measure is taken about it. Then the forms are returned to the students. Before we can return them, though, we need to make copies of them and then sign and stamp these copies for our own records. And that's what most of the work here is going to be. Oh, and just so we're clear, we're already taking measures about all of these. We just need to write things down in the forms and then file them in an appropriate place. Sounds to me like your issue lies with bureaucracy weighing you down, said the workload being super huge. Yeah, I'm not entirely wrong. It didn't take me more than 40 minutes to go through all of these and decide what measures needed to be taken. That's what the other members of the council are doing right now. They're out putting these measures into play. And that's supposed to take over six hours? How slow are you guys? Well, the council isn't very big in the first place, so we have around four members going around campus and mediating over a hundred disputes. Not to mention a lot of students refuse to accept our ruling, so it takes a while to work with those. Yeah, I'm glad I never joined the student council. It's a good extracurricular for your student record, though. It can help you get into a good college. Totally useless for me. Yeah, I suppose. Here, yeah, since you said you do half my stuff. Shuichi walks up the largest pile of paper they've set right in front of one of the empty seats and takes roughly half of them, setting them in front of his seat. Yeah, you can sit next to me. That way I can supervise you while you work. Gotcha. I pull up a chair and take my seat as he instructed, picking up and reading the forms in front of me. He's going to sit in directly across from us on the table. She seems to be pretty absorbed in the stuff she's reading. Yeah, Nichan, what was the resolution for this one? Voice one form. It says you had the sewing club filed against the pottery club for ruling a few of their textiles with clay. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that one. The uh, pottery club will have their annual budget slashed in the amount equal to the amount of cost of materials to make said textiles, as well as how to move their machines away from the sewing club's booth. 
This is the kind of stuff you get. Can the students settle these issues themselves? Well, a lot of people don't like confrontations. They prefer to escalate issues to us without saying a word about it. That's a pain. Agreed. Oh, by the way, the forms I'm handing you are the empty ones. I'm going to have you make the copies of the council. I have to keep interrupting myself to fill both you into what to write down. I'll never get work done. That's fine. I pick up a pen and start going over the forms. They're pretty thorough. Students need to fill out their full name, age, class, student ID number, student ID number at their club or class president if applicable, data on the person or club they are complaining about. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. No wonder these things take for fucking ever. Oh, here's another one, Yi-chan. The cooking club has their kitchen right next to the chemistry club's lab. They said the smell of chemicals is so strong people are leaving their master class in the middle of it. Oh yeah, that one's tough. We had their chemistry club close all windows that are directly next to the cooking club's own windows, so the smell would only leave from the far side. You just hope none of those trap fumes are the toxic kind. I try to tune myself with their semi-constant back and forth, trying to focus instead on copying these as fast as I can. After a few minutes of this, I start to feel something on my leg. At first it barely even registered. But then I realise that Shuichi's hand is resting on top of my right leg and he's stroking it idly. When I look to the side, he has one hand on the table, another writing things down on his forms. In fact, he's not even acknowledging what he's doing although I'm looking at him. He's stroking me so slowly too. It's almost like he doesn't even realise he's doing it because he's so focused. Although... While the feeling is very nice, it's kind of distracting for me. Um, Shuichi? Oh uh, yeah, do you need help with something? Even when I call out to him, the hand remains there. Yeah, the really doesn't notice what he's doing, he's very brazen about it. Um, this form here, I'm having trouble reading your handwriting. What's this word supposed to be? Oh, sorry, I wrote these in a hurry. Let me see. Uh, it says equitable. I uh, got it, thanks. I can't bring myself to call his attention to it. You know it's distracting, I like it. I've always liked it when you pet me or hug me. I just tried not to show it. I just hope Hitika chan does notice it. A few hours later. Oh man, I can't believe this. We actually managed to finish them in two hours. See, I told you I could be helpful. Sure, when she stopped goofing around and actually went at it at a reasonable place. At a place. Yeah. Well, with this, I should be free for the rest of the day, and if luck would permit it, tomorrow. Uh, it's so good to be done with work. Yeah, it's really great. Hmm, what's the matter? You don't seem very excited. Oh, don't worry, I definitely am excited. Huh? I still can't decide if he's just very good at playing clueless, so if he really didn't notice it. Over the past two hours, he kept intermittently touching and stroking my leg. A few times, he even went up to my thigh. Other times it got dangerously close to my crotch. It's a wonder I was able to work at all like this, but I do have a side effect at the moment that I need to worry about. Since we're free, how about we go out and do something together? Oh, sorry, Hitika, I'm never going to go out with you tomorrow, but at least let me spend the rest of the day with Hector. Boo, you guys already hang out together all the time. Yeah, this will be our last festival together before he moves out of the country entirely. Come oh, on, don't be so unreasonable. Hitika sighs, crossing her arms and leaning back on her chair. Fine, fine, if it means that much to you. But you're escaping me tomorrow, do you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, I'll see you boys tomorrow. I can see if my friend's display is still has any openings. Gotcha. Have fun. Bye bye. Bye, Hector Coon. She blows me a kiss as she walks up the door, not even giving me a chance to respond. She's as energetic as usual, I see. Yeah, and just as pushy, too. Hey, how about we go to look for something to do? I didn't expect to have a long time together this week, but I'm definitely not going to waste it. Um, I think I need a minute first. Hmm? Did something happen? Um, you didn't notice what you were doing. I have a hard time believing it. What was I doing? Um, touching me under the table? Oh, that? I thought I was just giving you some encouragement. I knew it. You knew exactly what you were doing. Well, no, not at first. I think I just started doing it out of habit, and Big Say just wanted to do it so much, I ended up doing it without noticing. But eventually I realised it, and also noticed you didn't do anything about it, so I tried to get a bit bolder. Does this mean I got a reaction out of you? You certainly got something reacting. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't think that would happen. I saw I wasn't trying to. I was trying something a bit more risque, but still innocent. 
There's nothing in this about what you were doing, perverted dog. Who was a real pervert? Me? Or the guy who got the boner? Uh, <clears throat> don't try to serve this on me. <laughs> it's all right. Shuichi squeezes my thigh, encouraging in the end. Ah! I jump back onto my feet. The sudden shock I felt running up my spine made me move without even thinking. Oh, wow, that really is pretty noticeable. Oh, we should probably wait for it to calm down before we even think about going outside. Ah! I grab a few sheets of papers and hold them in front of my crotch to hide it from his eyes. Careful, you might poke a hole onto those with that thing. Stop teasing me about it. Oh, come on. Is it really that embarrassing? I'm your boyfriend. Besides, you already even touched mine. It's over my shorts, but still. I can't not feel awkward about it. I'm not used to showing myself off in front of you, of all people. Well, I get being a little embarrassed. I mean, I have to admit I do feel a bit flustered right now in this whole situation. But you don't have to freak out over it. You weren't exactly calm when you told me about yours, either. In fact, you were red as a tomato. Oh, but after I did, I realised it wasn't that big of a deal. It doesn't bother me much anymore. If anything, you've been so coy and panicky over it, it's the thing getting me to freak out right now. Oh, um, it's not like I'm asking you to show it to me or anything, just don't freak out so much about it. I sit back down next to Shuichi, looking down the table and feeling my face burning. Are you okay? I didn't mean to make you so feel so self-conscious. I'm sorry. I'm fine, just feeling a bit embarrassed. I feel something soft against my cheek, realising a second late that I've been kissed. No oh, thanks for the help today. I actually get to have time to spend with you. I hope I wasn't a bother. Oh, not at all. You can never be a bother. I love you, Carriet. Shuichi grabs my hand, squeezing it tightly and nestling my cheek with his nose. Hey, uh, can I get a kiss? Here? We're alone, aren't we? Why not? No one can see inside, either. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Shuichi slowly leans into me. I close my eyes in anticipation of it. I feel his lips touching against mine, very gently and slowly at first. Once they come fully into contact with each other, Shuichi wraps an arm around my waist and pulls me in as close as he can, given our positions on the two chairs. Our lips smack against each other. Shuichi teases my lower lip with the tip of his teeth, but still never does more than that. The kiss doesn't last long and he soon pulls away from me, smiling from ear to ear. Oh man, I suddenly feel the energy to go the rest of the day without complaints. Yeah, it was pretty nice. I didn't realise how much I wanted to kiss him until I just did. Oh, you're right, Asan, I'm done for the day. Do you need to... A weasel looks into the room, looking at the table and seeing both Shuichi and I. As soon as the door opened, the two of us jumped apart, looking nervously at the door. Oh, did you actually get a volunteer to help you? Uh, yeah, we actually finished all the paperwork a few minutes ago. You don't have to stick around. Oh, seriously? That was fast. But you said it'd take you until the end of the day to do them. Yeah, but we had two volunteers to help, and one of them was a really fast worker, so I actually got things done in record time. Pretty neat, huh? I'm going to text the other members, tell them work is done for the day once they finish their assignments. Everyone was talking about coming over if they got done early to help you. Oh, that's sweet of you guys. Thankfully, everything is already done. Go on, you guys worked really hard to put the festival together. Just enjoy whatever you, whatever you can of it. All right, see you next week, Prez. See ya. Really safe to say the mood just... Uh, tanked, yeah. Well, did you manage to calm down at least? If so, we can go do something together. Yeah, the shock took care of it pretty quickly. Do you have any plans for where we can go? Well, I know what most of the displays and whatnot in the school are. I'm in charge of the paperwork after all. Great, anything fun or interesting? Uh, if you are wanted a visit, I didn't think I'd have the time, but it could work out. Sure, lead the way. Are you sure? Don't you have any places you'd like to go? I've been roaming the festival on my own since day one. I've already visited a lot of places. I'd like to just let you take the lead and have fun if that's alright. Huh, certainly more than alright. I don't mind taking the lead. Great, where are we going to go? Well, the cooking club has a masterclass going on. It could be fun. Masterclass? Oh no. Yeah, it's supposed to be taken in pairs, but they teach you a lot of neat stuff. I thought it would be a fun thing for us to do together. I see. My life is forward, isn't it? When we reach the cooking club's room, there are quite a few people hanging outside the door and chatting as they're waiting for something. Shuichi took off his glasses before he left his student council room, which I found to be a bit of a pity. He looks pretty handsome in those. 
A single girl is sitting on the chair next to the door with an apron and a clipboard. Hi, are you a member of the club? The girl, the canary, smiles at us and nods, getting up from her seat. Yes, are you two here to sign up for our masterclass? Oh, yeah, are there still any openings? Only if you left the class start in ten minutes. We're cleaning up the kitchen right now after the last class finished up. Oh, that's great. How much is the cost? It's 4,000 yen for the class. That covers the cost of materials, the cleaning after, etc. Would that be all right? Oh, sure. No problem. Shuichi pulls out his wallet and fishes out two 2,000 yen bills. Hang on, you're not paying for all of it by yourself. Why not? It's no big deal. The girl happily takes the money as offered and puts inside a small fanny pack she's carrying under the apron. All right, may I take your names, please? Uh, Shuichi Urata and Hector Mishimaya. The smile widens and she nods us energetically. Oh, the student council president? Well, thank you for dealing with our little issue with the chemistry club. It was driving us all insane. Oh, I didn't really do anything. It was the whole team. Regardless, thank you so much. It's gotten a lot more pleasant after those fumes stopped invading our kitchen. Now, if you two could wait outside for a few minutes, you'll be called in shortly. Oh, well, thank you. We need the girl be and lean against the far wall of the corridor. You really have to stop this habit of trying to pay for everything. Hmm? I don't try to pay for everything. Besides, what's wrong with me treating you? You're constantly pushing Jun Kuhn into letting you pay for his stuff. Well, that's different. Why? Because, I i mean, we... we, uh, we... Don't try to change the subject. Wow, your skill with words rivals that the bards of yore. A very moving speech indeed. Oh, shut up. As of commandeth, my liege. Please don't try to imitate a bard's flowery speech now. Mimicry, how dareth thee slander this humble minstrel with thine foul lies? I swear to God I'm going to ditch you. Also, I'm half convinced most of the stuff you're speaking is gibberish. Oh, it could be, I don't really know. Hell, I'm not even sure what I was saying. You're a dork. Oh, sure am. Shuichi leans closer to me, putting a hand on my shoulder and whispering into my ear. But I'm your dog, so you should get used to it. Yeah, I see. We're going to start with the next class. Will people please enter the room as I call out your names? Once we're inside, I get a good look at the kitchen. I think the only time I'd been here before was when class rep borrowed the place so she could prepare her nasty concoctions during a pitch for the festival. All the pans are shiny and neatly stacked. Every kitchen island has a supply of fresh produce, meats and other kinds of products required to cook. I'm surprised just how neat and organised this place is, considering they've apparently been hosting multiple cooking classes a day. Whoever their president is, they must run a pretty tight ship, so to speak. All right, I want every pair to man an island. Every island is fully equipped with an oven, gas burners, and enough counter space for the dealer to work on. The instructor, a busty dealer with a pair of round pink frame glasses wearing a laced apron, stands in front of the class. Her own counter is flipped from ours so she can access all of its features while looking at us. The lesson will last for three hours. During this time, you guys will learn to prepare a three-course meal. Here are the dishes we'll teach you all to make. She wastes no time in beginning her explanation. Grabbing her chef's knife, she pulls out a whole chicken and begins to carve it as she speaks. First we will work on our chicken. We'll extract from it all the meat we'll need for our appetizer and our entree. Gripping her knife like this, you'll make an incision here and... For what is worse, she is very thorough in her explanation. She points out a few sheets on each of the counters containing the recipes we'll be preparing today. Shuichi and I both put on a couple of aprons and were provided to us by the cooking club. Both are white aprons. Very plain, too. They don't have any flower patterns like the instructors. Yeah, you look pretty cute with that. Yeah, thanks. How about you get started on that chicken? Me? All right, then. I leave Shuichi with the task of carving the meat. Most weeks I'll work on the other stuff in the meantime, and I doubt he can screw up carving a chicken carcass. Let's see. Wow, well, these dishes sound fancy. Yeah, what are we going to be preparing? Well, let's focus on the appetizer first. A wild mushroom and chicken breast ragu served on top of Italian bread toast. R ragu, what's that? I haven't made it before, so I'm going to be going to this blind too. It's supposed to be a really thick sauce that's usually paired up with pasta or bread. Well, that sounds pretty nice. Oh wait, according to the instructions, we're going to need to make fresh pasta dough for the entree. Since I'll need a few minutes to rest, I suppose I should get to it first. Uh, that means I have to leave Shuichi do a bunch of stuff while I prepare the dough. Okay, um, I'll leave you to carve the chicken and slice the mushrooms and vegetables. Just make sure you stick to the recipe, okay? No fun little additions. 
Oh, I was already thinking of ways I could spice this up and improve it. Let's just stick to the recipes, okay? Besides the ingredients we've provided are measured for these exact recipes. You should either change them, then someone, something will have to go without. Mm, that's a fair point. I wouldn't want to ruin one recipe to make another one better. I think you mean you'd ruin two recipes. I'll get to work on the pasta dough. Be careful with that knife. No problem. Have you ever made pasta dough before, by the way? Uh, not really. It'll be a first for me, too. Yeah, do try not to screw it up. I don't want to hear that from you. Let's see. Need to measure out the ingredients here. Seems pretty simple. 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of semolina flour, and two eggs. Pretty basic. I'm surprised it doesn't call for any salt in the dough. I guess that's because it already absorbs salt while cooking in the water. Oh, by the way, what's the pasta dough for? Are you going to make spaghetti? Uh, no, the entree is supposed to be chicken alfredo with squash ravioli. Man, forming these is going to be a chore. Uh, chicken alfredo with squash. We're just going to be preparing Western foods. I thought we'd do Japanese stuff. I don't think people would pay for a master class where they learn to cook stuff they already eat at home every day. Oh, fair point. I make a flour well inside the bowl and pour the two mixed eggs into the centre, just like the recipe says to. I don't think I've kneaded dough of any kind before, so I'm a bit wary of dunking my hands in there. I start off by mixing it with a wooden spoon until it forms a shaggy dough. When it gets too hard to keep mixing like this, I give up and decide to go by hand. The feeling of it sticking to my fingers is certainly... weird. The instructor goes over everyone's counters, checking them on their progress and giving them tips on what to do. That's good. Don't be afraid to really get in there. Don't use your fingers so much. Use the bottom part of your palm to gently push the dough down and away from you. Yeah, like that. It's actually much harder than eating than I thought it would be. It's not super difficult or anything. It's only made out of just flour and eggs. I expect it to be soft like putty. I'm going to get started on the mushrooms now. You ready to carve the chicken? Well, it didn't take that long. It mostly came apart on its own. I look over at his station to check on his progress and... That's... Um... Instead of getting clean pieces of meat out of it, he completely mangled and shredded the chicken. There are even a few pieces of bone still protruding from the meat. Did you even pay any attention to her explanation? Look at your chicken. It looks nothing like hers. Well, I mean, I didn't see the point of spending so much time getting nice looking pieces when you're going to shred them anyway to use in the dishes. The point is, you're supposed to be learning a skill here. Yeah, that's overrated. What am I going to be carving a chicken in real life anyway? Why do you ask me to come here with you with no intent to do things right? Oh, by the way, what's the difference between a mild mushroom and a regular mushroom? I wonder. Seems he's obviously not even a bit interested in actually learning stuff. What if I told a really ridiculous lie about it? Would he buy it? No, I shouldn't mess with him like that. I don't think he'd be upset if I give him false information and he believes it. He could end up parroting back to someone and being embarrassed. Uh, usually mushrooms forage in the wilds that are grown specifically for sale. The kind you'd find in the woods or whatnot. Oh, wow. I thought you weren't supposed to eat those. Aren't they poisonous? Some can be, which is why if you're foraging by yourself, you need to be super careful. I'm pretty sure these were foraged by professionals and then sold to a market. And what's the difference from regular store-bought mushrooms? Don't ask me, I've never used them before either. Well, I thought you were really savvy on cooking stuff. Let me I know everything. Alright, I need to get chopping these. Make sure you cut as much of the stems out as you can. You only really eat the cap. Really? Well, that sounds like a waste. Whereas with most mushrooms, the stem is very chewy and fibrous. Not very tasty and the texture is kind of bad. Oh yeah, wouldn't want that. I'll make sure to cut them out. Oh hey, your dough's looking pretty good. It's really round and kind of shiny. While we talk, I continue to knead the dough as best I could. It took me a while, but it managed to all come together into a cohesive ball of dough, which I'm really proud of. The recipe says to let it rest for 30 minutes before I can open it and fill it up. In the meantime, I'm going to start on the ragu since you already finished with the chicken and the mushrooms. Uh, sure, feel free to just tell me what to do next. Can you chop the onion, shallots and garlic when I work on this? Oh, happy to. I toss some butter and oil into the skillet, mixing in the mushrooms and making sure to sauté them slowly. Mushrooms take a while to cook, or at least a regular supermarket variety. I don't know how long these take. Well, at least the good thing is that overcooking mushrooms is very difficult to do. 
and make sure to stir them constantly or adding a few more knobs of butter as I go to keep it from drying out. I think they look about done. Add in the shredded chicken, the minced garlic and shallots, some red wine vinegar and some balsamic vinegar as well as salt and pepper. Wow, that's a lot of cream that goes into this recipe. To get the Alfredo, we're probably going to have a heart attack from all this cream and butter. Here's hoping we don't die from it. Oh wow, that smells really good. Yeah, I'm supposed to cook it down until it gets thick and creamy. Oh, can you cut the bread into slices so it can toast in the oven? Sure, I'll be done with the squash in just a bit. Things have been going much smoother than I thought they would. Shuichi's been really well behaved, all things considered. I thought for sure he'd be trying to sneak weird things into the food, but hasn't had so much of a peep about it the whole time. This is really nice. Cooking right next to him, working together. It's relaxing. Well, this bread is a bit stale. Some people believe stale bread makes for better toast. I think they're both the same. The bread gets too stale and just becomes unsalvageable. Why does it get stale in the first place? Like, how does it work? I don't know all the signs behind it. For the most part, it just loses moisture as it ages, which causes it to become hard. By the way, a neat trick you use to make bread good again if it's only one or two days old is to wet all of it uh, just a little bit and to force it, then put it in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. That actually works. Yeah, it rehydrates the bread and softens up at the same time as it becomes warm. When you put it out of the oven, it should be dry and steaming when you cut it. You'll just need to flip it around the oven once or twice, but it definitely works. Huh, can use it in the future then. We throw a lot of bread out in the house because some days Dad just doesn't feel like eating it. Yeah, it's a good way to get that steaming hot loaf of bread, like if you just bought it from the baker too. Man, that does sound good. Alright, I'm putting the slices in the oven now. Hopefully it doesn't burn. There's a timer I turned off the table, just use that. Oh, good idea. The ragout should be ready in a few minutes. Can you keep stirring this while I start work on the filling for the ravioli? How come I'm only in charge of preparing and stirring stuff? Or I'll actually do some cooking too. Oh, you do? That's... Uh-oh. Come on, you're hogging all the fun parts. All the ingredients for the entree are already prepped. I can cook it while you stir. That's an idea. Great, I'll get to work on it. Wait, I didn't say I agree to it. Let's see... It says you to cook the squash in a separate pan till it's soft. I can put that to boil on the side while I work on the rest. Huh. This Alfredo sourcing doesn't sound very difficult. Yeah, it's remember you need to cook until it's a bit thick, since it'll be used as filling. Can't be too runny in that situation. Hmm, that's a fair point. Alrighty, I'll just cook the onions in the butter until they start getting golden. I mostly use breast meat for the ragu. Since the raviolis are the main dish, I thought they'd go better with the thigh meat. Just make sure to remove any and all pieces of the bone once you shred it, okay? Oh, don't worry about me so much. I've got this. You have never given me any reason to believe you when you say that. In fact, you being confident about it just scares me even more. I'm afraid you're going to mess up because you're not paying atten enough attention to what you're doing. I huh. certainly feel a rumbling feel in the pit of my stomach, and it's not nice. Shuichi diligently stirs and works on his skillet. Since I'm trying to pay attention to my ragu, I can't really keep an eye on him while he does that. I'll just pray nothing goes wrong. Yeah, I have a technical question. Yeah, what is it? I don't know when the onion and butter are done. Wait, you still just stirring onion and butter together? Yeah, I said you were still stirring until golden. The butter kept turning brown, that's why I waited until it got golden. I go over to his skillet and it's a mess. Dear God, it even smells weird. How did you manage to do that? It's way overcooked. You burn the butter. Just put this in the sink and start again. Oh, really? I thought I was doing so well. Shuichi, if you're having questions, just call the instructor. She's doing rounds and helping people. But she can't know you need help if you don't ask. Well, I didn't think I needed help. I'm really going to have to babysit him through this process, aren't I? At least if he manages to cook something edible, I'll already be happy. I think it'll be the first time ever. Yeah, the prospect is pretty exciting for sure. All right, I'm going to chop another onion and try, I'll try this again. This time, remember, only the onion needs to turn golden, not the butter. I got it. I'll try not to mess up again. Sorry. I'm pretty much done with the ragu. I'm going to get started on the dessert. Oh yeah, what's the dessert supposed to be? It says here it's supposed to be an apple puff pastry turnover. Oh, thank God they're providing us the puff pastry because that would be a bitch to make from scratch. Is it really that bad? I don't make all that often, but I did see a few videos on pastries and there were so many steps in making it my head was spinning. 
Yikes, not good. Yeah, I'll stick to store-bought pastry for this. Just need to peel and chop the apples into chunks and then prepare a brown sugar syrup. Man, there's going to be so much food when we're done. Is that kind of the point? Food is good, after all. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm looking forward to tasting it. Yeah, just keep your eyes on what you're making. We don't need any more burned butter. Oh, shit. Yeah, he didn't even notice his butter and onions were starting to get a bit overdone. Baby steps, I guess. Okay, I'm adding the other vegetables and the chicken now. Careful, don't just dunk stuff in the skillet, otherwise some butter could splash off and scald you. Right, right. I think it's the first time you ever had someone supervising while he cooks. His knife skills aren't the best, and he doesn't pay much attention to what he's doing. But both of these things can be remedied. It's the unnecessary additions that fuck things over. Since you're not allowed to do that here, we should hopefully get something edible. And if not, well, he looks pretty cute when he's squirming, trying to get mess up stuff on the burner. <laughs> I'm kind of getting the urge to tickle and tease him a little bit. But I'll avoid doing that while he's handling the hot pan. It's weird, when I think of it. We're dating now. Like, things haven't changed that much, but when I look at him now, I feel different than before. I'm not confused or conflicted over it anymore, either. At this point, I'm pretty sure that I really do have feelings for him. Hell, he's such a dork. I want to kiss him so bad right now. Are you okay? You've been staring at me without doing anything for a few minutes. Oh, all right, I have some things I need to prepare for the turnovers. Isn't your syrup done yet? Let me check. Hopefully it's okay. Yikes, I was giving him crap for not paying attention to his pots too. Yeah, it's fine. It's at the perfect consistency, actually. I'm going to drop my apples inside now with a bit of cinnamon. Recipe doesn't sound too complicated. It's not. The complicated part will be stuffing the raviolis. We're going to have to do them together. Oh, sure. I work on cooking the apples down a bit while I open the puff pastry and cut it into the shapes of the turnovers. I know it's not all that difficult. This pastry is pretty nice to work with and I can put them together pretty easily. Okay, going to put these in the oven to bake. Did you already get the toast out? Oh uh, yeah, you're fine. I put them all neatly on top of parchment paper and inside a baking tray and slide inside the oven. Thanks to the toast, the oven is already preheated too, so that helps. I'm going to open the pasta dome now. How's the filling going? Oh, I just added the cooked squash to it. Can you taste to make sure the seasoning is okay? Sure. Shuichi grabs a spoon and puts a bit of everything from the filling on it, offering it in front of my mouth. I blow on it a few times so as not to scald my tongue before eating it. Mm. A little bit more cheese would be nice. Alright, I'll add it in. As soon as it melts and incorporates, we can get started on stuffing. Not so fast. You need to chill the filling a bit, otherwise you cook the pasta for even putting the boiling water. Oh, that's true. We have about an hour and 40 minutes to spare, so that gives us plenty of time to chill it while we plate the ragu toast. Just make sure to let the filling cool down before we put it in the fridge. I got it. I feed the pasta as thinly as I can onto the pasta roller. At one point it starts to get really thin and delicate, so I need Chuichi's help handling it to avoid ripping. It's a bit of work to get it through, but it comes out fine. Alright, so I need to cut them into circles and cover them all with plastic film so it doesn't dry out. Well, in the pasta dough, it's kind of like playing around with Play-Doh. You should have touched it when I was still needing it. It really felt like playing with Play-Doh. <laughs> but what's our yield in this recipe? I don't know the exact amount. We cut them sort of big, so there can't be that many. Still, we spread the dough so thin, but it came quite long. We end up having to cut it into multiple sheets. It's getting too problematic to handle it. Well, let's get started on plating the appetizer. I can't wait to taste it. Sure. Our toast is very dry, golden and crunchy, so it looks pretty nice. I try to put the ragu on top in the way it doesn't look too messy. I spring a bit, a bit of grated parmesan and cheese and finely chopped herbs to garnish. Well, this looks pretty good. It looks pretty tasty. Should we call the instructor over to try? Yeah, looks like a few other pairs have finished and plate in their appetizer too. The instructions were all made, so we should finish right about now anyway. Yeah, a few people are still lagging behind. My guess is those are the ones that either had to start over due to mistakes or just slow because they don't have much experience. I also had to start over at some point, though. Yeah, you had to throw away butter and onion. Many time wasted with that. Hmm, fair enough. I raise my hand trying to get the attention of the instructor so she can come over and try our dish. Oh, you boys are finished too. Let me try it out and see how you did. She uses the fork and knife to cut a small piece, quickly putting it in her mouth. Immediately she smiles, nodding appreciatively at the two of us. 
Oh, this is very good. The seasoning is perfect. It's very creamy. Good job. How are you doing on the other two? The turnovers are baking. We're waiting for the ravioli filling to cool a bit where we can stuff them. Oh, I kind of messed up on the filling at first, but he had me fix it. She nods, smiles still on her face. That's very good. What tip I'll give you, if you didn't leave big chunks in the filling, you can use a piping bag to fill it more precisely and make it less of a mess. Is that so? Uh, Shuichi, how chunky is the filling you made? Mm, I think it could fit in a piping bag. Oh, I'm not too sure. You can also fill it with a regular spoon if you're not sure. It's just a tiny bit harder to be precise with it. Thanks, I appreciate the advice. She nods once again and walks off to another duo station. Well, I guess we just wait for the turnovers to bake and the filling to cool. Pretty much. Hopefully it won't be long. An hour later. The ravioli seem to be done. Help me drain them and plate them up. Sure thing. Things continue to go in smoothly for the two of us. The class nearly come to an end. We are rushing to plate up the last of our dishes. I do have to congratulate Chuichi on that ravioli filling. I tried a bit of it before piping it in the pasta dough and the texture and flavour were pretty good. <laughs> Can't believe Chuichi of all people actually managed to cook something good. Yeah, a bit of grated cheese on top for garnish. Show me add some kind of sauce to the outside too. It looks kind of dry. The sauce on the inside is already pretty creamy. You don't want to drown the plate in sauce. Hmm, if you say so. We have three more minutes before the end of the class. I'm going to start going through the stations where I finished plating their last dishes to try them. Good thing I'm not super late, otherwise I'd be freaking out here in that countdown. Thankfully we haven't had many hiccups during this process. There, done. Nice, with a bit of time to spare too. All right, let me see what you boys prepared. She walks up to us and eyes our last two dishes. I'll try the ravioli first. Ooh, the pasta is very tender and soft, cooked perfectly. The inside is pretty creamy. It even oozes out a little bit. That's good. She cuts off a piece and tastes it. Immediately her face lights up and she squeals quietly. Oh yes, this is very good. Very creamy. The sauce is very rich. There's a good ratio of sauce to meat to squash inside the ravioli. Seems like they are distributed pretty uniformly. I'll try the apple turnover now. The pastry makes a lot of crunchy sounds as she cuts a piece, which seems to make her quite happy. You heard the sound I run my knife on top of the pastry? It's dried out and crunched up nicely. The colour is also good. It's a very appealing golden brown. Well, let's see how it tastes. She moves her head quite a bit as she's tasting. Seems like she's pondering something. The flavour is pretty good. You did a bang up job on that. My only issue with it is the apples are a tad on the mushy side. I think you might have cooked them too long for stuffing the turnovers. Oh, I was only made the turnovers, so it was my mistake. Just keep in mind we're making this in a recipe. You want the apples to stuff a b- bite to them before you put them in the oven, otherwise they'll become mush. Gotcha, thanks. She nods, walking away to taste the plates from the rest of the class. Ah, I messed up. Oh, I don't feel bad. Everyone makes mistakes. Besides, it still looks delicious. Let's eat it before it gets cold. Yeah, you're right. Let's... Although I will toot my own horn right here, the pasta is also really good. Even the apple turnovers are just a tiny little bit mushy. Not nearly as much as I thought they would be given the instructor's judgement. Then again, even something pretty minor can stand out where everything else is done really well. Oh man, this is delicious. It is. And he decided to make us do this. Oh, so am I. Ah, Miss Shumai, you have a bit of syrup on your face. Hang on, I'll get it. He grabs a napkin, gently rubbing it on my face to clean up the dirty spot. There, all better now. Thanks. We continue to enjoy our food until we finish every last piece. Oh man, I'm definitely feeling a bit full now. Thank you for coming today. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you did, please tell your friends about it. We'd really appreciate it. Oh man, it got really dark while we were in there. We just spent three hours inside. Well, everything's already dying down for the day. I don't think there's much we can do here anymore. Yeah, you're right. How about we just head home? Maybe you could stay over for a bit. Well, I'd love to, but you have to remember I have a curfew now. Oh, right. Well, I can still walk you home. Hehe, <laughs> okay. There's quite a lot of movement in the streets at this time of the night. Probably because the school festival is a really popular event this time of year. There's a cool breeze blowing, gently roughing our fur as we walk together into the night sky. I hope we had fun today. Shuichi breaks the peaceful silence we were in up to until now. I look to the side, I see him eyeing me with a smile. I did, I was really afraid of straining you by asking to spend time together. I'm glad that wasn't the case. 
you know, my boyfriend. Spending time with you is one of my favourite things to do. Jenny squeezes my hand for a second before pulling away once more. It's probably wary of being too affectionate in the middle of the busy street. To be honest, it made me pretty happy to have you come to me today. What do you mean? Well, I always tend to be the one dragging you around everywhere. And if we started dating, part of me was really worried you weren't really liking it and were just afraid of saying something. I mean, no offence by saying this. It's just that it had been your MO so far and it was hard for me not to think that was the case. Oh. I look down on the floor, focusing on my feet walking step by step. For some reason, I suddenly feel very embarrassed. I was really upset for a while. It's really frustrating me when I think about it. It's the first time in my life I've ever felt lost when it comes to know how I'm feeling. I you confessed to me when we started dating. I thought that maybe I had feelings for you, but at the same time that I wasn't sure. I always liked spending time with you. Once I thought that maybe you liked me, a tiny little part of me was pretty happy. I think I might have always liked guys and might have just, I don't know, refused to accept it, bottled it up so much until even I couldn't notice it. It's confusing for me. Well, I don't blame you. I spent years telling myself my feelings for you were just friendship. It took a while for me to realise it's in love, and even longer to accept it. Yeah, but when I think about it, I really am happy to get to spend time with you like this. I think I really do like you a lot. I guess I might have been liking you for a long time now. Do you have any idea how long? Uh, I'm not sure, a bit under a month, maybe more, maybe less. I just didn't notice it for a while. Yeah, I can take that. Shuichi casually shoulder bumps me as we walk side by side down the street. He giggles happily and I can't help feeling that hearing him sound so happy is wonderful. I feel butterflies in my stomach. I, man, this is embarrassing to say. I look forward to seeing how things will work out between us. I want us to become even closer. From now on, I'm in your care. <laughs> well, I look forward to it too. I promise I'll take care of you for as long as you're willing to also take care of me. Yeah. We finally reached my house, coming to a stop in front of the gate. Yeah, kind of wish you lived a little bit farther away. Yeah. We stand motionless on our spots, neither of us seeming to want to say bye. Shuichi looks down on my eyes and I do the same. I feel happy just having him close by. It's strange. It all came so suddenly and I'm still confused by this whole thing, but I'm happy. Well, I should probably head home already. Can't hang around here forever. Yeah, thanks for spending time with me today. Oh, it was my pleasure. I'm glad you had fun. Chuichi leans towards me, giving me a quick peck on the lips. You'll be good, okay? Be good? What am I, a dog? Well, technically you are. I playfully punch him on the shoulder. Good night, Carriot. I'll message you when I get home. You better. Bye-bye. I wave at Chuichi as he walks away, watch him take a turn and disappear from my sight. Once he's gone, I go inside. By the time I left that last class display, the sun had already completely set. It was too dark to see without the hallway lights. Most students and guests alike were headed to the outside of the school buildings. The last few remaining displays began to shut down. I spent all of today on my own. I actually managed to see Shuichi getting dragged around by the arm once a few hours ago. I guess Hitoka-chan was serious about not letting him go. Well, this is what he gets for ignoring his sister for so long. Still, I could wish I could be spending time with him right now. Exiting the building, I see a lot of people huddled around the bonfire. They're stacking all the logs neatly in a squared shape, all of them set up very precisely. I guess the point is for it to look aesthetic for the photos. Also, is it bigger than last year's or is it just my imagination? I guess Shuichi did a really good job of clearing the budget of the festival, huh? Looking around, there are definitely a lot of people here today. I wonder if there are more guests this year than we had last year. As far as I know, no one makes a sense of that, so I don't think anyone knows. Ah, Hector. I hear my name being called, immediately turn around, seeing the figure of a tall bunny hopping towards me with a big smile. Hey there, sire. I haven't seen you since Monday. What's up? Oh, not much. Just been going around the festival looking at anything that seemed interesting. What about you? I helped out a lot of my class cafe, so I didn't have as much free time as I'd have liked. That's too bad. I was free the whole time, but honestly I didn't have as much fun as I thought I would. Really? How come? Well, everyone else was busy and I kind of got tired of going around alone. Whoa, are you okay? That suddenly doesn't sound like you. 
Even I can want company every now and again. It's not weird. Oh, there was a specific person's company that I miss the most. Did you come outside to watch a bonfire dance, or are you taking part? No, I don't really have anyone to dance with. I just didn't really have a reason to stay indoors. I should like a dance with me. Sorry, I already have someone to dance with. All oh, right, you're going to dance with Keikun. You did dance with him last year. Uh, I'm going to dance with this guy I've been kind of, sort of, maybe flirting with for a while now. Besides, Keikun is with his band. Wait, 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 a guy you've been... You have a date? As soon as those words left my mouth, I knew I'd screwed up. I mean, wow, good for you. You have a date. Nice try. Oof. For my indiscretion, I receive a swift punch to the gut. Uh, sorry. Why do you even have to be so surprised? It's like I've never dated before. I've had boyfriends, you know. Yeah, but you've been single since you and Morisaki senpai broke up. I can't expect you to stay that way. It's not like I've single because no guys hit on me. I just wasn't interested in any of them. Be perfectly honest, I have a hard time believing any guy would hit on her. Who would ever want such a violent woman as a girlfriend? I'd probably be completely emasculated if I ever dated someone like her. I guess you'll just have to watch us dance, huh? Oh sure, relish my misery. That is so nice of you. If you didn't want me to, then you should have been an ass. For fuck's sake, I just blurted it out. It's not like I wanted to offend you. Devil woman. I'll just stand by the sidelines and I'll watch everyone else dance. You and your mystery guy, Shuichi and Hitika-chan. Hey, Hector-kun? Yeah? I'm going to ask you a question. And whatever you say, I'll believe you, okay? Um, okay. Why are you acting so awkward all of a sudden? Uh, you and Shu-chan dating? I immediately freeze. I wasn't expecting to get asked this, and point blank, too. My mind goes blank. For a second, I have a hard time even absorbing what I've just asked. Why are you asking me that? That's such a weird question. It's just that you two have been awfully close lately, so, you know. Yeah, I... To be honest, I have no reason to hide this from her. Sai is my oldest friend, right up there with Shuichi. And he even said himself that she already knew he had feelings for me, so, for a while. I... Of all the people I know, I think she's the most likely to be supportive of us. We... we are, yeah. Really? Oh, that's so great. I'm so happy for you guys. She suddenly tackles me, wrapping her arms around me in a tight, bone-crushing hug. Ow, 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 ow. I get it, I get it. Please let go of me. Oh, sorry. Still, that's great news. I've known he's had feelings for you so, for so long, but I never thought anything would come out of it. I only found out about it recently. And I didn't even know I liked guys until then. To be honest, I'm still confused about the whole thing. And I'm not sure about how it works. You're overthinking it. It's not that different from normal. Falling for someone is always the same. The only difference is what they have between their legs. You really have to put it that way? What? It's true. You're so not ladylike at all. Oh man, I have to go congratulate him later. Aren't you a bit too excited about this? Oh, come on. The two of you are dating and Chuichi must be really happy right now. And it's such a good timing too, considering his team lost this weekend. You're probably the only reason he can be cheerful right now. I hadn't thought of that. It's not all good. I kept wishing I could spend time with him during the festival, but he's been so busy. We've only seen each other two or three times since the weekend. Ah, oh, that is a bummer. I guess you must be really upset that Hitika-chan is dragging him around, huh? Yep. Still, I wish you guys all the best. I hope it all works out between you two. I swear, if you do the same thing to him you've done with your ex, girlfriends, I will castrate you. Roger that. And you have to go. Talk to you later. Scary. Sire chan you're too scary. The bonfire is lit and the people around all take a step back to avoid standing too close to the flames. I watch the orange flames clack it, crackling and dancing around high in the air. The heat against my face is pretty comfortable, even if it's a little bright. Little by little, people start forming a wide circle around the fire, separating themselves in pairs. Be they friends, lovers, whatever, there are lots of people beginning to dance together. Something I never really taken part in during all my years of school. I never really saw the point. I always thought it was a silly little thing. As people dance around the bonfire going in circles, I spot, spot Chuichi and Hitika dancing. I wave at them and the two seem to spot me too. Hitika-chan waves enthusiastically at me. Shuichi on the hand looks at me with a scrunched up face. I can't really tell what he's thinking. 
Maybe he also wishes he were dancing with me? It'd be nice if that were the case. They disappear behind the bonfire again. It's weird how entranced and weirdly, weirdly rhythmic this whole thing is, even though people are all doing their own thing and no pairs are synced up with each other. It almost looks like a wave going to and fro. I have to admit, it's kind of fun to watch. When the circle goes around again, I see Shuich and Hitika have disappeared. I wonder myself what happened then when I see the two walk in my way. Did they give up on dancing already? I know Shuich has two left feet, but it can't have been that bad that she just called it quits. What are you guys doing? Gave up on dancing already? I already had my fun. Besides, I'm not the one this idiot wants to dance with. Huh? Uh, sorry, Hitika. I promise I'll make it up to you later. Whatever, go dance with him if that's important to you. Just don't blame me if he's not as good a dancer as I am. She chuckles, poking him in the ribs with a haughty smile on her face. Oh, wait, what are you guys talking about? Uh, Carrie, Ed, would you dance with me? What? Oh, seriously? I know it's not uncommon for friends to dance together, but there are very few guys dancing together. The underlying question is pretty clear. Are you sure you want to do it in front of all these people? Speaking of what I personally want, yeah, I'd love to dance with him. But what if people think something's up because we did? Yeah, I need to stop overthinking things. How did he can even agree to this? There's no way he told her about us, otherwise she wouldn't be in such a good mood. Oh, I don't mind if you don't. Look on his face. His eyes looked at me almost pleadingly. Like he would say, please, dance with me. Shuichi raised his hand, offering his open palm to me. I swallowed a big chunk of saliva, trying to work up the courage to take it. Oh, stop dawdling already. The dance will be over and you'll have to go nowhere. Wah! She gives me a strong slap on the back that makes me jump forward. Shuichi smiles warmly at me, his eyes silently encouraging me to accept his offer. I can't believe he actually asked her to let us dance together. He's such an idiot. What if that had clued her into us dating? Really, what a reckless idiot. Are you sure about this? Oh, as sure as I'll ever be. God, his eyes are so beautiful, the light of the bonfire shining on them. I raise my hand to take his, deciding to forget about being cautious. I'll just do what I want to do right now. After all, this is our last year. This will be my only chance to do this with him while we're still students together. I grasp Chuichi's hand with my own. His hand is soft and warm, and even a little clammy. I can finally feel my heart racing in my chest. God, this is so embarrassing. Still, I'm okay with that for now. Huh, thanks for indulging me. I think I should be saying the same. I laugh, suddenly feeling really bold. Shuichi smiles at me, his bright green eyes shining like gems, all their warm affection directed at me. Come on, let's join the circle. Shuichi leads me towards the circle of students dancing together. My ears twitch, my whole body shudders under this sudden heat. Still, the heat of the fire gently envelops me, its bright light tinting the ground beneath this orange. We slowly dance around the circle. I try my best not to be awkward, but it's no secret to anyone I'm not a dancer. Despite tripping a few times and making total fools of ourselves, do of us laugh and smile the whole time. Shuichi wraps an arm around my waist, squeezing me tightly and fondly. I enjoy the feeling of his hands on me far more than I thought I would. It's weird. Over this past week I've had many times where I had doubts or felt confused about my feelings. I felt uneasy and certain and worried about how things might end up between us. But every time we get close like this, forget all those thoughts and just enjoy myself. Far more than I felt I could doing things like this. You know, it's simple and silly. Spending time alone together makes me happier than I thought it could. I'm glad he asked me to dance, and I'm glad I agreed to. You look pretty cute with that look on your face. Shuichi leans his snout close to my ear and whispers to me, a big handsome smile on his face. I feel an urge to kiss him then and there, but I stop myself. It's not something I should do in public like this. I get the feeling that every time he kisses me, I become more addicted to that feeling. God, I want us to be alone so much right now. So weird to suddenly be feeling that way. Well, thanks, you look pretty handsome too. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. Yours is the only opinion that matters to me on that front. My face feels a bit flushed at those words. My ears twitch a little from the embarrassment. A smooth talker? Huh? <laughs> I wish. Maybe if I were, I'd have managed to get with you earlier. <laughs> Somehow I just don't see that happening. 
Uh, it's not like you're so smooth either. And you're also a terrible dancer. The same goes for you. I suddenly kick him on the ankle, making him wince and laugh at the same time. Oh, are you kicking me now? Uh, like you were in public, I thought I'd make you pay for that. <laughs> I'm not afraid to take you on, big guy. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Shuichi squeezes my hand tighter. I can barely feel the warmth of his body amid the heat of the fire, but nevertheless it's still there. It's a very comfortable, nostalgic feeling. Now that I think about it, he's always looked for an excuse to hold or hug me whenever he could. When I think about it, those memories are far more precious to me than I thought they would be. I think I might be falling for him pretty hard. It scares me just how easily that happened. Stupid, handsome Shuichi. An hour later... I barely noticed time passing by. In fact, the dance was over all too quickly. Part of me feels like I wasn't able to enjoy it at all. I'm walking home, quietly watching the stars above, humming an old song while I do so. You seem to be in a good mood. Shuichi speaks up from beside me. I feel his hand brushing up against mine and the swooshing sensation of his tail wagging behind me. Of course, I'm dimly aware that mine is wagging just as much as his. It feels peaceful. I am. We reached my house all too soon. Suddenly it feels like these walks home I used to find so dull and long have started to go by pretty quickly. I wish they were even longer. Oh, thanks for walking me home. You don't have to thank me. It was my pleasure after all. I hope Hitika-chan wasn't too miffed about it. Oh, she lives in the opposite direction and so far away she needs to take a car to get there. She's my sister and I love her but there's no one walking for an hour and twenty minutes to take her home. Did you call a cab for her? Oh, yeah, besides, if I walked her home, I'd no excuse not to come inside. I still feel a bit awkward about seeing my mom. Why? Oh, I don't know. Part of me feels guilty for not going with her doing the divorce. I haven't been around to see her in a while. That's the first time I've heard of this. Why didn't you ever tell me? Well, I didn't want to worry you. But then again, after seeing what you did during Dad's birthday party, I think it's better if I explain my reasons to you. Otherwise, you might just show my mom out of the blue one day. You're never going to let me live that down, are you? Not a chance. He takes a quick look around to see if there's anyone nearby before giving me a quick peck on the lips. Man, I wish I could stick around a little longer. So do I. I kind of have an idea. Could you ask your dad if he'd be okay with you spending the night here during the weekend? He's allowed that before, so I don't see why he wouldn't now. Well, I can try. He's been in a good mood lately, so now might be a good time to ask. That's great. Mom will be travelling to a neighbouring city to help on a case, so it'll just be S2 and Aki. Not like I have any problem spending time with your mom. Miss Aki-san seems to like me a lot too. I wonder how much she'd like you if she knew you were my boyfriend. That is a fair consideration. I have no idea. Still, it's nice to hear it. You call me boyfriend like it's no big deal. Yeah, I know I can be awkward and a little slow at dealing with things, but I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with it these past few days. But then again, it's only been a week, so it's not like I've been super slow to get used to it. Well, to be honest, things are going much smoother than I expected. A part of me totally thought you'd have broken up with me by now. That's not a nice thought. Don't think things like that. Oh, I try not to. It just comes to mind when I'm distracted. You come to my mind a lot when I'm distracted. Shoot. Oh, I should probably get going. If I stick around too much, I want to leave. Hell, I already don't want to. That's fair. Hope I'll get to see you again tomorrow. You bet. I watched him disappear into the nearby turn, silently wishing he could stay a little longer. God, is this really what falling for someone is like? Such a weird feeling. I still like it. And as it becomes Saturday, that's where we're going to leave it for this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed that one. And there'll be more tennis ace in July. So I'm trying to do these roughly every month with this little extra for June here. And before I go, as usual, it's time to mention my top patrons. Grizz, Evan King, David Taylor, The Beholder, Sumuto, Dissonance, Brandon Bradford, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Tiger Cub, Sindri Dragowolf, Gunnar Muller, Brian Hall, Marcus and Bastian. Thanks for all your support to all my patrons. And to those of you who support Basket as well, so we can actually get to read through this VN. 
I'm still not too sure what's happening on the weekend. I think it might be an Echo Project one. I just don't know which one at the moment. But that will be this weekend. And we might wait until the next weekend, or I might do another video midweek. Next week we'll see. After all, it is Canada Day, so I have some time off uh, next week. Uh, for now, thanks for watching. Bye for now.